Hi, everyone. I am Cal, the director of the Kerbal Space Program research team on Kerbin. Most people think that there are only two solutions for radio boosters. Well, knowledge can be counterintuitive. By the end of this video, you will design completely new rockets. What if I told you that you can get a 76% increase in terminal speed with jet engines? Expensive, but effective. Interested? I thought so. We're talking about more than 1,000 meters per second increase in speed by using jet engines as radio boosters. Let's remind basic information about radio boosters. The solid fuel variant or the liquid fuel variant. Let us start with the weight of the fuel. Oxidizer and jet fuel have a weight of 5 kilograms per unit. Monopropellant has a weight of 4 kilograms per unit, but it does not deliver much thrust. While for solid fuel, it is around 7.5 kilograms per unit. It is a reactive mix, so it is like a mix of fuel and oxidizer in a solid state that burns once it is ignited. While jet engines are not commonly used as radial boosters, they have some advantages in this role. First, they don't require you to take a oxidizer, which saves a lot of weight for the fuel. Second, they are very powerful between 9,000 and 20,000 meters. If the craft has enough speed and large enough air intakes, for an orbital burn, it is best to initially angle the rocket at 45 degrees, which means a longer oxygen path for the jet engine and thus favors this solution in the troposphere. They also have drawbacks. They can flame out too early if your airflow is not optimized. The ramjet engine part always works best at speed, so they are less potent at takeoff. Let us compare these solutions. Let us see how we best use jet-based radial jet boosters. To start with, we have to compare apples with apples. Otherwise, we will not get conclusive data. So our team has built an inexpensive rocket that is capable of low curb and orbital flights. We will do test flights first, straight up, in a later video at an angle of 45 degrees for orbit. The idea is to design a optimized radio booster for the troposphere. Later, as these boosters don't go so high, Maybe we can design them in a way where they can be recovered. Also, for this test, each booster also received a canard flight control surface and four Sepatron rockets. Oh yes, the capsule has a landing gear. After the roll around of the first flight, we are not taking any more chances. So, let us start looking at the video of the classic solid booster version. Booster version. Launch sequence start. Three, two, one. Ignition. As you see, at a cost of $24,572, we obtained 1,351.8 meters per second of terminal speed. The rocket had a weight of 23,627 kilograms. Now let's look at the liquid fuel booster version. Launch sequence start. Three, two, one, ignition.
no big difference, at a cost of $29,972, we obtained 1,379.3 meters per second of terminal speed. The rocket had a weight of 24,377 kilograms. Now let us look at the first JX-4 jet engine radial booster design. Launch sequence start. Start the jet engine. Throttle up. Come on. More, more, more. Launch. Well, that is quite an improvement. At the cost of $36,455, we got 2,083.2 meters per second. The rocket was lighter at 18,675 kilograms. Now, we test the JX-4 jet engine radial booster design number two, which uses a shock wave intake. Launch sequence start. Start the jet engines. Throttle up. Come on. More, more, more. Launch. That is a huge improvement. For $45,317, we obtained 2,381.2 meters per second. The weight was 18,863 kilograms, 
only a 188 kilograms more than the first design. Next, we tested the J404 in design number three. Launch sequence start. Start the jet engines. Throttle up. Come on. More, more, more. Launch. To our surprise, it outperformed both classic designs for a cost of $35,455. It gave us 1,629.6 meters per second with a weight of 16,257 kilograms. This is by far the lightest design. The next design, design number four, used the JX4 again with an extra external radial air intake on top of the shockwave intake. Launch sequence start. Start the jet engines. Throttle up. Come on. More, more, more. Launch. This was again less good than design number two, as it cost $46,317, but only delivered 2,373.7 meters per second with a weight of 18,983 kilograms. The last design, number five, added a second radial air intake, which further decreased performance.
Launch sequence start. Start the jet engines. Throttle up. Again, performance suffered at a cost of $47,317. It reached 2,364.8 meters per second with a weight of 19,103 kilograms. Sure, such large money differences can buy you a lot of rocket, but we are talking about boosters to lift the rocket that you want to send into orbit. The tests are clear. This expensive solution can help the Kerbal Space Program lift heavier rockets into space. I hope you enjoyed this presentation.